Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys a quick comparison between the Sony HX30V, or for our purposes as well, the 20V, and the Sony RX100. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time with the RX100, but so far it has blown away my expectations. Uh, yes, the price point is extremely high. You're looking at $650 for this point-and-shoot camera, and a mere... I would say 370 to 400 for the 30V, clearly even less possibly for the 20V, which doesn't have the Wi-Fi, but is otherwise identical to this camera. So really nice cameras, and a lot of people out there are saying to myself, which one should I go for? I want to tell you guys right now, even though I haven't spent a lot of time with the RX100, you really shouldn't be comparing these if the 30V appeals to you, and I'll explain why. The 30V is completely directed at the consumer market. That's not to say that professionals and enthusiasts and, you know, semi-pros, amateurs alike don't really enjoy what it represents because it is fantastic. Uh, very good image quality, a great uh, 20x lens on board. Uh, you've got great image stabilization for video and it of course does accommodate pretty much every video mode that you could possibly want out of a pocketable camera. And between the incredible image quality uh, 18.2 megapixel sensor. It's not a very large sensor, which I'll get to in a moment because that's what the RX100 represents. But the overall package is just no compromises whatsoever at its price point. So keep that in mind. So for that under $400 or around $400, you're just not going to beat this. The geotagging is just, you know, an extra great feature, even though some of you will consider it a gimmick. Of course, HDMI out, great. Uh, feeling camera, the build is definitely solid, but this is where the RX100 comes into play. So you're the average consumer, you want a travel camera, this is certainly not going to disappoint. I think you'll be very, very pleased with it. The only thing, as I've mentioned in my previous coverage, is that when you zoom in, in other words, crop, try to get, you know, the picture within the picture, those extra fine details, even though this has 18.2 megapixels crammed into that small sensor, it's not going to resolve the same amount of detail that something like the RX100 will. So, RX100, really similar in terms of form factor, but that's about all it shares in common, other than the fact that it is manufactured by Sony. So, first and foremost, you don't have a 20x lens, obviously. You've got a 3.6x uh, lens, which is Zeiss glass, obviously marketed to be better, as it should be, than Sony's uh, traditional G glass that you find on most Sony products that are, you know, whether it's uh, pretty much the entire point-and-shoot lineup. Zeiss has always represented the best uh, pairing of glass offered for Sony up until, of course, the NEX introduction, where now with adapters you can do pretty much anything you want. But back to the RX. Build quality, fantastic. This manual uh, dial here so that essentially you can use this as a focus ring you can also use it as your actual zoom control so you're not relegated to the traditional toggle something that just shows the uh, effort put into focusing on manual control uh, as I mentioned before build quality is just superb uh, almost all metallic so really solid very much feels like the offspring of an NEX family member, but of course missing that interchangeable lens. Uh, F1.8, I don't have to tell you guys how fantastic that is for low light, for something that is in the point and shoot category. And there's pretty much nothing like this on the market. So even though it's got an incredibly high price point, from what I've seen so far, if you own an NEX, as I mentioned in my unboxing, if you own any type of high-end digital SLR, and want the best possible pocket camera available, which also does very well so far in my test with video, then it's going to be difficult to find anything other than the RX100 on the market right now. That also really just isn't going to disappoint you in any way. I mean, I could have seen them coming up short with build quality, and so far the small things that I found that uh, bother me in the couple of days, it's such a short list, I'm not even mentioning it today because I have to see if they're real problems. But so far, uh, really what it comes down to, if you're thinking about these two cameras, my advice is you really uh, shouldn't be because they represent two completely different consumers. If you're going for the RX100, you're not interested in having the flexibility of the 20X lens. Um, that's not to say that everyone wouldn't love to have it, but you're simply more interested in the actual photographic quality. And of course, video quality, that's still to be determined, but the, the actual image capability, the ability to shoot raw images, uh, that one inch sensor that's in here is just, uh, you know, substantially larger than the sensor that's here. So even though you're only looking at 18.2 versus 20.2, there's just a tremendous amount of image detail. And I can tell 
those of you out there right now that know that you know the 20v and 30v when you crop images will show a bit of you know the watercolor smudging effect you're not going to find that you're going to find far more similar results to what an NEX a low-end NEX camera would yield of course this is not standing up to my NEX 7 I didn't expect it to I mentioned that in the unboxing but it's not so far away so really promising stuff really like what the RX100 represents and I look forward to giving you guys a full review and continuing to compare the pros and cons of these two cameras because I know how appealing both of them are even though clearly their prices are not close at all so 350 well 350 to 400 650 represent completely different markets build quality image quality and just what you're looking to get out of something that can fit in your pocket of course I will update you guys on my experience with this camera because it is the beginning of a whole new look for the point-and-shoot market if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later